you all, see you all here. Such, a, such an amazing talent in this room. We've done a lot with the product over the last, uh, I'll say, uh, six months, nine months, a year. And, and I'm really excited to come and share um, some of that recent innovation um, with you. Uh, but first of all, I want to thank each and every single one of you. What you guys do today really helps us be successful. We measure our success in terms of business outcomes that we can help our customers achieve. The last mile of innovation that you deliver, the last mile of deployment that each of you deliver really helps us get there. So thank you very much for, for everything that you guys do. Excellent. So if we were to take our product roadmap and break it into sort of you know, five broad categories of investment that we're doing, uh, I'll say those five categories are these five pillars up there. First of all, open platform, right? This is what helps us take the innovation that you guys are doing, take the extensibility that our customers need to achieve the last mile of automation in their workforce, uh, in the processes that are building. We're able to help accomplish all of that with the openness of the platform. There's a lot we've done here, and there's a lot that we continue to invest in making sure that our platform is open. If you wanted to go build a set of automation that wasn't available implicitly ingrained into our platform, it can easily be plugged in. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the recent things that we've done uh, in terms of the openness of the platform. The second piece is rapid results. This goes back to the discussion Daniel was having with, with many of you right before my presentation, which is how do we actually make sure that there's a robot for every employee. Having a robot for every employee doesn't just mean that the employee is able to run the processes that were driven top down by the organization, by the center of excellence, but how do we actually give the power, the productivity to the end user so that they can go take the innovation, the things that they want to do to improve themselves, to improve their daily work life, uh, and be able to drive that innovation themselves. And really helping drive rapid innovation, the rapid results to what we are able to do, what people are able to achieve in that extension. So we're doing a lot around making sure that we can make it easy to design those processes, we can make it uh, easy to learn our product to the free training, to the academy, so we'll continue to make a lot of investment there. <coughs> Paths to AI, extremely important for us. This is actually, you know, our customers will come in and tell us, we've been talking about AI in many different areas and many different things that we want to do, but this RPA is actually the real implementation of AI into a business workflow. This is the only place where we're able to take some of the algorithms that our data scientists have built and really apply it to achieve business processes, to achieve the business outcomes. So that is really, really interesting. We'll continue to make a lot of Im investments ourselves. We've done a number of things around you know, being able to embed a natural language uh, processing engine into the framework, being able to call cognitive APIs, being able to call um, you know, diff different scripts written in Python. But this is also some one place where we'll continue to work with our ecosystem, our partners, because AI is very broad and we will never be able to accomplish everything that all of our customers need from AI, so we would love to continue to work with all of many of you partners in making sure that we're able to take AI and enable AI within the enterprise. Scalability. We're not thinking about the cost, what customers are doing with us today. We've got customers that have deployed thousands of robots today. We've got customers in Japan that are saving a million hours of work capacity with their robots. They want to expand it to three million hours next year. We're looking at, you know, our, our vision here is if you look at an enterprise worker, 50% of their work today can be easily automated. It's repetitive, it's menial, it's not something that they're exercising their brain on, it's not something they're having fun with. We want to go and automate that. Now imagine that for a second. 50% of what a large corporation is doing today can be automated through our technology. That is the scale that we're building our technology for. How do we actually take and make sure that our, our technology can be used to run processes across thousands and thousands of employees doing tons and tons of processes every single day? How can we take that and make sure that the technology continues to work, but it also continues to make sure that everything around what the processes are working from a reporting perspective is available 
um, to the, 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 the business owner, the person responsible for making sure the work is getting done. And the last but not the least, security. If you're really going to treat our bots as what uh, every employee is doing, we want to make sure we continue to build a layer of security, a layer of compliance into the processes to make sure that we can audit what their bots are doing. We have a technology that's used by governments worldwide. We want to make sure that we continue to drive more and more capability from a security perspective, and we're continuing to make investments every single day into the security capabilities. We just released about a week and a half ago, 2018.3. 2018.3 was the third release this year that we've done. And for those of you that are following, will easily agree with me that this is probably the most comprehensive release that we've done till date. Not just the most comprehensive release we've done till date, I would say the most comprehensive release ever done in the history of automation. There are lots and lots of capability that are in this release all the way from ability to create reusable components, being able to create versions of activities and create dependencies between those versions across the project so that you're able to seamlessly upgrade from one version of, of, of UiPath to the next version without having to worry about processes that are in production breaking. To be able to take human input before or during the execution of a workflow through a pop-up, through a, through a modal dialogue that can take the input and, have, and pass it over to the process to be able to do. But perhaps one of the most exciting things that we've done in this release is what Daniel talked briefly about, which is the UiPath Go. UiPath Go is a marketplace that we launched only three weeks ago, right? Maybe not even three, it was about two and a half weeks ago. Since then, We've actually seen 8,000 unique visitors come to this website. We've seen more than 5,000 downloads I've done. There's more than 150 different reusable components that are available on this marketplace for people to use. So let's quickly take a look at what this marketplace actually looks like. I'm going to switch to this um, screen if you can. Excellent. So this is a real website. You can go to go.uipath.com. You can go look at these components. You can browse these components by category. If I'm looking for, let's just say I use uh, SAP. It's one of the applications I use uh, in my, uh, in my workflows. Uh, I can quickly search on SAP, and I'm able to see a lot of SAP-specific you know, processes, activities that people have created, and I'm able to use them. If I want to go um, search on something else, let's just say I want to search on uh, something that we've done with Microsoft. You can quickly search on that, and I'm able to quickly filter and see different things we've done from them. If I take any one of these, I can drill into these, uh, you know, these components. So here I'm going to drill into the two steps authentication component that supports multi-factor authentication um, for what we're trying to do. I can take a look at that. And I can quickly scroll down, and I'm able to see you know, the things that are available. I'm able to quickly get some media dependency, see who published it. And if I want, I can download this. So it's not just a, a, a marketplace where you just go and publish what is available, but I can, if I wanted to try my hands on it, I can quickly click on download, and that's able to download that directly as a, com as a component that I can add to my studio, or I can directly add it as a feed to my studio as well. I'm able to do this stuff and, and add them based on them. For example, if I click on direct uh, add to studio. Now, one of the reasons you'll notice that it's, I'm actually browsing anonymously on this website, so I haven't quite logged in. But if I had logged in, if I had a, a component that I would, and when I try to download something, it wants to know who I am, so it knows who I'm downloading it. And we can you know, authenticate through different websites. But I've got another uh, browser session here where I'm actually logged in completely. And I can quickly now see if there's things that I've downloaded, I can see my library. So that I download it once, and I can always come back to the library. If I go from Studio on one machine to Studio on another machine, I can always look at this feed and be able to get the library of components that I've downloaded and I want to be able to use. So again, this is a, a really cool way to take innovation that is built by the community uh, and be able to consume them to automate the, the business processes that I have. We expect every single one of you um, will uh, you know, very soon 
publish components into the R marketplace as well. And when you do publish components, uh, we share with you the download, uh, we share with you the customers that are looking at it, you're able to get direct feedback from people putting reviews on the website. So it's a great way for you um, to build your community and build your brand uh, in, in the automation workforce as well. So we can go back to the slides. I want to quickly um, share with you a couple things on what's coming next. We will continue to keep the pace of innovation. We are, um, we've done three releases this year. We are going to do another release this year, which will support a, a long-term release. But, but beyond that, um, some of the things that we're focused on. So Daniel talked about the fact that RPA is awesome today for taking human tasks and automating them and delivering them. But a lot of these tasks are a little bit more complex and sometimes require human input to complete that process. It requires these are maybe long-running workflows that require human input to come in through different aspects. So maybe it's an exception that you want human to manage. We will create workflows that will support human and robot collaboration out of the box. You're able to create a workflow that can have humans come in and provide that input. We, we talked earlier about the ability to create a data extraction platform that's able to, using intelligence, using machine learning, understand different things, documents that you're looking at so you can extract information that can be used from documents, from emails, from other sorts of unstructured uh, places where, where, where information exists and be able to extract that information and use it in the automation so you can again expand the scope of types of automation that companies um, are able to do. A lot of what we do comes from direct feedback from customers and partners. So we've got immense feedback that as we are scaling the number of robots, as we are adding not tens, but hundreds and thousands of bots, we want to be able to create very intelligent scheduling algorithms that are specific to the SLA, specific to the priority of jobs that are done, because that's how humans work. We don't treat every single email in our inbox the same. There's definitely some tasks, some things that are more important than others. So we want to be able to create that level of sophistication in the scheduling of things that robots are processing as well, so we can support the small, smart scheduling and also being able to create um, analytics and intelligence based on the works that robots are doing. Daniel mentioned earlier, ro robots are getting smarter. They will continue to acquire more and more skills, skills that go beyond visual understanding, skills that go beyond the ability to extract information um, from documents, skills that actually not just imitate human skills, but actually augment human cap capacity and human capability. A good example is think of, um, think of somebody trying to physically do fraud detection of credit card transactions. Um, that's actually not quite possible today. You can't have people understand every single person in this room and their you know, different ways in which they do credit card transactions and be able to figure out if this transaction is a fraud or not based on you know, the past credit card transaction they're doing. That's a great way of taking a machine learning algorithm that has been sophisticated and giving it to a robot that can actually go execute it at scale across the business processes that we have in the company. So we're looking at how we can uh, enhance and get um, skills beyond them. Self-service licensing, this is another key one. A lot of our customers have given an, a lot of feedback that our licensing um, should get simple, our licensing should give the, the control to the organization so they can decide how they want to manage their licensing across users, across machines. We are making a big investment in, in making sure that the licensing is simplified from the ability to understand during a pre-sales process, but also for a company's ability to take those licenses and manage them as uh, as and how they see fit. And last but not the least, um, RPA as a service, robotic platform as a service. How do we actually make it easy for companies to start using robots, even if they don't want, have any IT person in the room? How they can they make sure that you can take a uh, go to a website and start deploying robots on your machines uh, without having to put up an orchestrator, without having to manage how um, you take Elasticsearch, taking all of that away and being able to just go to a browser and use that to drive automation. That's exactly what we're thinking around, making sure that we can take RPA and provide that um, RPA as a service that can easily be used to consume by, by our customers. And I'd say, um, you know, one of the key things that our 
uh, from an intelligence perspective, we see the, the robots doing is a lot of times the, the challenge with bringing AI to the enterprise isn't that, that we don't have the data or we don't have the data scientists. It's just that the data exists, but data exists in different silos, right? A customer information system is split in 10 different systems. A robot is an ideal person to go collect that information across the different systems, process it, format it in a way that we can give it to the algorithm that needs to make the decision and then take the decision and or the prediction and t pass it back to the application that needs to consume um, that decision and be able to close the loop and every time that decision and prediction is made, be able to measure how accurate that decision was so that you can flow and make that continuous feedback loop into the organization so you can continue to make amend and, and write better, better algorithms. So we see there's a lot of scope in how machine learning will continue to get applied in the context of RPA and it actually improve the application and the scope of what machine learning can do within the enterprise. Last but not the least, I want to announce um, a, a key initiative that we are launching. It's called Automation First Immersion Labs. What it is is it's, a, it's an ideal place for us UiPath, some of our best developers, to come together with partners and customers to sit together in an environment and imagine, imagine what the automation could look like tomorrow for our customers, how we can make business process improvements through automation, how we can take machine learning and AI and embed that into companies' business processes to derive different sorts of automation. So we're going to open two different automation centers, Automation First Immersion Labs, um, in, this year, in, in December this year, one in Bangalore, the other one in Bucharest. And in 2019, we're going to open four more, one right here in London, one in Tokyo, two in the US, where we'll be able to come together with customers, with partners, and really have those deep dive workshops and how we can take automation to the next level in the context of business process. So this is something you'll hear more about in the coming days, but we're truly excited in making sure that this technology and workplace is available for us to go co-innovate together and make automation more and more possible in the context of the business processes. So with that, thank you very much.